Binge the full week of The Ray Taylor Show ad-free over at InspiredDisorder.com slash plus. This is The Ray Taylor Show. Magic Mike XXL is the sequel to the Magic Mike franchise. I've heard rumors that there's going to be a third. I don't know if that's true. This movie takes place three years after the events of the last movie where Mike left his job of stripping to follow his career, to follow love. Uh, so this movie takes place three years after that event. And some, some things have changed. Some things have changed. Uh, he's in Tampa still doing his custom furniture now. Uh, he has like an employee working for him. Uh, kind of living the dream, as it were. Uh, but he gets a call from one of his old buddies, from Tarzan, uh, who says that Dallas is gone. And uh, thinking that he died, goes to what he thinks is awake, ends up being a pool party. And the reality is Dallas and the kid went to Macau to do to set up a, a male stripping event there. And all of the other strippers that were part of Mike's crew are going on a road trip to, uh, where are they going to? To Myrtle Beach for a stripper convention uh, for one last hurrah. Uh, of these these guys entertainers and uh, they wanted Mike to go with them and Mike does and I gotta say I had a blast watching this movie I enjoyed Magic Mike uh, the idea of a movie about male strippers wasn't the most enticing uh, idea for a movie that really got me excited but I am a fan of Steven Soderbergh who directed the first film I enjoyed the first film. Uh, and this one's a little bit different. This one's definitely tonally a little bit more fun. Uh, this is a road trip movie, which is always fun. Uh, you have Mike hanging out with, it's a lot more of the other strippers, which didn't we didn't really get to know much about them in the first movie. It was really more about Mike and him being kind of a mentor for this kid, bringing this kid into this lifestyle. Also, Mike's kind of uh, dealing with this love interest with the kid's sister. Uh, that whole thing growing in that movie. This one is more fun, road trip, funny. Uh, and, you know, you get to know the characters more. You get to see uh, them fleshed out a little bit more. You care about them a lot more. All these other, these, uh, you know, male entertainers. So I loved it. I absolutely loved th this movie. It was a lot of fun. I was very surprised, uh, kind of nervous going into it, like un not knowing what they were going to do with this because he like left that life behind. But in this one, obviously, he gets brought back in, brought back in by his crew, thinking that Dallas was dead. But in the whole thing, they just wanted to bring him back to, uh, to do this, to go with them to Myrtle Beach. And uh, I will be spoiling this movie, obviously, it, you know, to talk about it. Uh, I want to talk about moments that I enjoyed, aspects of this movie I enjoyed, uh, and give them away. But it's a movie that came out back, it came out back in uh, 2015, so it's been out almost a decade. That's ridiculous. Seven years. Uh, it's insane how, how fast time flies. And uh, I absolutely loved it. So I'm going to spoil it. Uh, but anyway, so they go, so he calls them, gets them. He, you know, hangs out. He decides to go with them to Myrtle Beach. We find out he's doing that because he's he tried to propose to Brooke, I think her name was, uh, and she dumped him. So she's not in this movie, neither are McConaughey or the kid. And all that stuff is explained. Uh, and it makes sense that he would want uh, to go. There's a great scene after he got the call from them. He's in his workshop working on a new piece of furniture and genuine song Pony comes on, which was, you know, kind of his song from the first movie. And he couldn't it like brings the dance out of him He's hearing the song. He can't help but dance, which is kind of fun. It's like kind of almost a choreographed in a way dancing while he's like grinding metal and doing stuff. It's, it's a fun scene, right? It's it 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 lets you know in that scene the tone of this movie that it's going to be fun there's going to be dancing 
and Channing Tatum's not out yet. Mike has is is still got the dance in him, and it shows that he like he loves it, right? He's one of the best, which is also another kind of like this this movie is like competence porn. You get to see people who are good at what they do, doing what they do. You get to see these like attractive men dance in ways that are very creative and very interesting and very fun and very entertaining and i enjoy that aspect of it so genuine pony brings it out of him he decides to go and they go there's a fun drag queen they stop by a bar on this road trip which the nice thing about road trip movies it's like it's always like they just on the trip they run into different types of characters along their trip and the first kind of group of characters they go to a drag queen uh like contest at a bar they all kind of compete they decide to compete which is fun uh there's a little party afterwards where he first kind of meets the new love interest in this movie which is the the love interest in this movie isn't as big a part of the movie as the first movie uh, which is nice because it's just like, oh, another, I mean, they kind of look very similar. The look of the, which is Amber Heard plays the love interest in this, in this movie, I believe. Um, of course, it's like, doesn't show it. Where, how does this not show it? She's like the main character. There we go. She plays Zoe. Uh, which I think is like the first time I've seen Amber Heard in anything. Obviously, the trial with her and Johnny Depp, everybody knows. Uh, but I, I'd never known her for anything, so didn't recognize her until the end credits. We're like, oh, this is, these are who these people are. Uh, but she plays love interest, but they're not really. She's a photographer. She wants to be a photographer. A lot of this movie is also about following your dreams, which is similar to the first movie. It's that kind of idea of following your dreams, which in the first movie, that was Mike's goal to get to a place where he could start his custom furniture business. And in this one, we see all of the, the dreams of all of the characters, what all of these characters want to do, what all the strippers who are getting out of the game, what they want to do next, the things that they wish they could have in their lives, which I enjoy that as a theme. I enjoy that in life. I enjoy that aspect of following your dreams, believing in yourself, challenging yourself, trying to do something that a lot of people don't think you can do. You know, the idea that a male stripper could just do a have a, a custom furniture business is ridiculous. One of them wants to get into the frozen yogurt game. The, another one just wants love, just wants to find a, a wife, have a wife. There's another one that has aspirations to be an actor. There's uh, one of the st new strippers we see on this road trip wants to also be a musician. And one of them's just trying to find a woman that is his quote-unquote glass slipper. The guy's got a, uh, a dong that is way too large for most women, and it hinders his ability to... to connect with anybody sexually so he's trying to find his glass slipper so they're all trying to find these things that are passions within themselves desires dreams they have uh and kind of trying to understand and get the strength to do those things and to believe in themselves and mike is kind of the guy who's like He's like the example of it being possible to follow your dreams and to be successful, even though he's maybe not as successful. And he, you know, tells him that following your dreams doesn't mean it's easy, doesn't mean it doesn't involve a lot of work, that it's it's constant grinding. It's it's it never gets easy. But it gets easier to sacrifice when it's something you believe in and, and love doing. So I appreciate that. Let's take a little break from the show to promote. I have Inspired Disorder Plus. Would you feel good about donating $5 a month to an artist 
that you want to support. $5 a month is not much, less than a price of a cup of coffee at Starbucks. A lot of people would probably say, yeah, Inspire Disorder Plus, people can go, and for $5 a month or $50 for the year, you get access to all of the old podcasts that I've ever done, like 10 different podcasts, hundreds of podcast episodes. You also get access to like special deals. So if you do want to collect my artwork, you get discounts on stuff. Watch this show, binge the full week ad free for $5 a month. Like you get benefits for the $5 a month or $50 a year. So it's not like you're just donating $5. There's something, you get something for that. Would you feel good about donating $5 a month to an artist that you want to support? A lot of people would probably say, yeah. Head on over to inspiredisorder.com slash plus and become an Inspired Disorder Plus member today. And now let's get back to the show. So the road trip, uh, kind of their last hurrah. There's a great scene where they all take Molly and they start brainstorming. They're like, yeah, we should get rid of all of these old routines that we used to do. We're going to go out on top. We're going to create our own new thing, which I, you know, I love. It makes sense. It's the best thing, you know, like let's, let's do stuff that we love doing, right? And implement that not only to what we want to do outside of this, but also like it's are going to be our last thing. Let's like do routines that we can believe in and we love doing. So I love that aspect as well. Uh, it's a hilarious moment. They stop at a, at a, a convenience store, like a 7-Eleven type store. And the guy who's like having trouble finding his glass slipper is not believing in himself. And it's like a lot of the big themes about these male strippers is that they're there to heal people. They're there to listen and not only just entertain women, but to like to feel fill a void in a lot of ways uh, that that allows women to be open and enjoy themselves and enjoy life in ways in which their normal life may not in which their normal relationships may not it allows them to step outside of themselves and really understand who they are and what they love and the convenience store it's uh he's dancing to i want it that way by backstreet boys it's it's funny like the whole mission is to get this clerk to smile and I love it. That's what so much of this movie is. It's just like it's fun and it's tr- it just makes you smile. It makes you just like happy. It which is crazy. They also go to like this private club where uh the the head they're trying to find a new MC. It's very important that they have an MC, right? Which their MC got injured, fluffy uh, got injured in the, a crash and they need to find a new MC. And it's this woman that, that Mike used to know played by Jada Pinkett Smith. She's plays Rome and she's got like this mansion. That's like a private club. And it's just, it's just women everywhere. And then like topless male entertainers, uh, one of which is Michael Strahan. Another of which is Donald Glover. Donald Glover is also a musician and he kind of merges his stripping with rapping and singing, which Donald Glover, obviously very talented performer in all of those venues. Uh, But that was fun to see, you know, adding in new characters into this thing, into this road trip. And they kind of like team up, right? They end up meeting each other later on in in Tampa for the, the finale it's great. So they're like assembling their team on the way as well. Jada being, you know, the MC, Donald Glover and another one of the dancers joining the crew. And there's a great scene where uh, one of the guys in Mike's crew is uh, up at the front seat uh, while Donald Glover is driving. And they're talking about like kind of how they got into the business of stripping and how you know, the dude from Mike's crew started off working at like Disney world as like, uh, one of the characters in the costumes and, you know, ended up getting into stripping. And then like his, you know, dream is to be, uh, an actor, 
Donald Glover talking about, you know, he wants to be a musician. He's got an EP coming out. But it's like, even if that side ends up blowing up for himself, he really gets a lot uh, out of being a male performer as well. Like, it's it's an interesting heart-to-heart where they both, like, realize that they're kind of healers. They enjoy the impact they have on women's lives and, and like that aspect of themselves, and it helps them fulfill a need within themselves. Love that heart to heart. Uh, they end up going to at one point uh, one of the people they met at the beach after the drag queen competition. Uh, they go to one of their houses, which is, ends up being like a mansion as well. And then they meet a, another cast of characters, all these like, you know, middle aged women. Like one of them, uh, Andy McDowell, plays the mom. And it's just a bunch of, you know, middle-aged women drinking wine and then a bunch of male strippers come in. And then they have, like, these deep conversations. And, again, they talk about how, uh, you know, they help women appreciate themselves. They allow women to enjoy who they are. They kind of, like, almost do, like, relationship advice. Like, there's deep conversations, which I enjoyed that as well, right? Like, it's just another kind of thing, another aspect of a road movie where it's like, oh, you're meeting different. It allows your main characters to interact with different types of people on their trip. And in interacting with those different people, we get to know more about our main characters, but we also get like introduced to a, a wide range of different types of people. So like the, just the, the structure of the road movie Uh, kind of brings a lot of enjoyment out of that and you know it still has that kind of like tension sexual tension between mike and this new woman zoe but it's it's really just kind of a side thing it's not really something that ever unlike the first one where it feels a lot more like a bigger part of the movie it's very much a side aspect to the movie um and of course, Andy McDowell is the glass slipper, which everybody like when everybody like they're so, you know, they're like they're bros, but they're also they have an emotional side. They have depth to them. They want more than just looking good and dancing for women like they want more out of life. And they care about each other. There's like a love there. There's a bromance between all these dudes, which I appreciate that as well. One of my favorite movies of this year, RRR, has the most bromancy of bromancy moments. And in a lot of ways, Magic Mike XXL has that same type of, of vibe, right? Of these like bro dudes who are like, you know, kind of like the pinnacle of male like aesthetics. And they're still like, you know, you scratch the surface, there's depth to them. There's a care they have for each other, a love they have for each other. And I appreciate that as well. Let's take a little break from the show to promote The Many Faces. That's right. I am also an artist. I do ink paintings on paper of abstract faces. A new face, a new painting gets released every single day over at InspiredDisorder.com. So head on over to my website to purchase original artwork directly from the artist. Also, there are prints available for select images. Head on over to inspireddisorder.com, buy original art, buy prints if that's your jam, if you want 8x10 prints on high quality paper. Also, if you're looking to wear some art, there are shirts available with original artwork by myself. Select faces from the many faces are also available in t-shirt form. You go to inspiredisorder.com, you buy original artwork, you buy prints, you buy shirts, you're supporting an artist directly. And if you're the type of person that likes to invest in NFTs, there are also NFTs available for select faces. Go to inspiredisorder.com now. And now let's get back to the show. Then they got the, of course, a montage, the kind of setting up, the preparing. They get to Myrtle Beach. Uh, Andy McDowell, the glass slipper lady, 
has tons of money, so they give them a nice car to roll in to Myrtle Beach. She she upgrades their rooms and gets the a conference room for them so they can all do their rehearsing, trying to put new acts together, trying to create acts that reflect the people they are instead of like your typical fireman and sailor type of male stripper stuff, which I enjoyed as well. So there's a fun montage of them trying to put all that stuff together. And ultimately, it is like it's a movie very similar to the first one where it was mostly the story of Mike cha- transitioning in his life, following his dreams. But in this movie, it is all the other characters who are all in a life transition. This is their last hurrah. This is their last time they want to go out on top as being the best. Even though it's not a competition, it's just like a convention or whatever. So I like, you know, I like, and they're, they're trying something. They're, they're testing themselves. They're doing something new, challenging themselves in their last, like it's, you know, it's scary to do stuff like that. If you're in a creative industry of whatever, and you're trying something completely new from scratch, it's scary stepping out of your comfort zone. Right, not doing the things that you've done your entire career. So they get to the thing, and the, like backstage, you see all the other like acts and stuff. My favorite that I saw, which you don't actually see the performance, you don't see how it plays out on stage. But one of the stripper crews was like Matrix, which I thought that was hilarious. And there's the all the all you know stereotypical type of uh, strippers out there as well. And then, you know, the performance is great. The final performance, especially with, I mean, you get to see all of the, you know, Tarzan has his thing. The the guy who wants to be a, a musician, a singer, does his thing. You have Donald Glover doing his thing. You have, but the best, obviously, is Channing Tatum. And this other dude from, from Roman's, uh, from Rome's crew. And he brings Zoe up. And he's like dancing with her, getting her to smile and enjoy life for a moment. But just the technical aspect of it, I thought it was great. Well performed. Like you're seeing these, they're like, okay. It's like, I feel good about these, uh, these other strippers doing their thing because it means a lot to them. Like a guy loves sweets and loves candy, does a candy themed one. Uh, Tarzan is an artist, so he does like an artist themed one. And then Channing Tatum's is like a technical thing where he's syncing with it's like a mirror routine with the guy from rome's crew and it's great i mean technically it's great well executed and then after everything it's it's almost like the end of oceans 11 the oceans 11 remake where you have all of these casts of characters they finished their job they they succeeded in their goal and in the end of Ocean's Eleven, you have all the different characters after the heist sitting at the Bellagio Fountain, watching the fountain, kind of just reflecting on the moment and enjoying the moment, soaking it in. And this movie, it's them watching fireworks go off. Has a tonally very similar between both of those movies, which also Soderbergh directed... The remake, the Ocean's Eleven remake. So it kind of fits there. And I think he like ghost directed uh, this movie as well. I think he produced it, but not credited as the director. But I was surprised how much like you end up loving all of the characters. You get to see dudes able to do what they can do. Dance amazingly. Unique, interesting performances. The aspect of, you know, following your dreams, challenging yourself, all of those aspects, finding more depth to to characters that would normally be portrayed as very two dimensional, finding a lot of depth to all these characters, really just making you love them. I apps I had so much fun watching this movie. It was crazy. It was crazy how much I enjoyed, like I had a big smile on my face. It was a lot of fun. I was like, this is great. This is great. 
I really enjoyed Magic Mike XXL. I'm surprised. I liked it. I th I enjoyed. I think Magic Mike is a better movie, but Magic Mike XXL is a way more fun movie. Like it's just a lot of fun, and still makes me enjoy a lot more of the characters. Like it's not ne necessarily as dramatic as the first one. Like bad things. Like bad thing. This is definitely more of a comedy road trip movie than it is like a romantic dramatic type of a thing which the first movie i think was a blend of a few different things drama romance comedy where this is way more comedy but still like grounded not, not like wacky comedy but comedy in a very similar way that like oceans 11 has a lot of comedic moments so i enjoyed it if you haven't watched magic mike xxl I highly recommend watching both of them, but I had a lot of fun watching XXL. I really did. I I enjoyed it. It was uh, it was a great watch, a fun time, and uh, I highly recommend it. Check it out. New episodes of the Ray Taylor Show come out every single day. Subscribe on YouTube and everywhere our podcasts are found. Binge the full week over at InspiredDisorder.com slash plus. Buy Ray Taylor Show merch over at InspiredDisorder.com. And follow the show on Instagram at Ray Taylor Show. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Peace. Out! Today, Today is, is the, the day, day where you, you wake up and you realize that everything that you've been dreaming about, everything that you've been wanting, every goal and wish and hope that you've ever had can become real. Dreams can come true. What you manifest in your mind, you can bring to reality.